Are you feeling stuck, cramped, like you don't have any room through impact and you're not getting the most out of your strikes? Well, in this video, special guest Tyler McGee and myself are gonna run you through our favorite exercise to get you out of this position, give you more room, and get you striking that ball well. Let's get stuck in. All right, mate, so let's talk about this P6 delivery position when the club shaft is level with the ground. Yeah. And something very specific to the lead arm here, so the left hand or the left arm for the right hander, uh, relative to what you see with the professional versus the amateur. We were talking about the elbow crease here, the inside of the elbow, and exactly where that points by this stage. Expand on that for me. Yeah, so I, sometimes it can give you a pretty good guidance on what the player's you know, tendencies are obviously if the elbow crease instantly starts pointing up and to the left, so that direction, yeah, like sort of this direction, mm -hmm. they're going to be in a tough spot coming through impact. Either they'll stand up if they're a good player, or uh, sometimes that might be a slicer if, if they're not able to react fast enough. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Exactly. So it can give some really nice guidance on where the hands and sort of how the body's going to react to that hand position. Yeah. And so when it comes to the professional golfer, what would you see that they would generally, or the position that they would generally get themselves into by this stage of the swing? Yeah. So I would say like if that, you can sort of see how that's pointed almost right back at the camera and do it one more time from the top. So as they're doing that, you can sense like if the lower body, let the lower body guide it a little bit more. There you go. Perfect. So I'm we're getting there with the lower body almost helping the hand position get there and then that's going to get you right into mm -hmm. a really nice delivery position and, and it, if it was someone who's, who's hitting hitting more of a big draw they might even be that way yeah so that's another like clue okay big path into out you know let's focus on where that crease is pointed halfway down and see how your body reacts so if you're this guy you might be like okay what's that oh wow that feels so different or if you're this guy it's like okay what Oh, and then obviously right side bend and they start to react without you telling them to do a whole bunch of different things. Yeah, I think having reference markers for uh, players at home, let's say they're filming themselves from the down the line view and they're coming or they're struggling with a big slice and they're not quite sure of a feel and a sensation to kind of work on themselves. Then all of a sudden they chuck it on camera and they see that their elbow crease here is kind of pointing out in this 45 degree angle. Yeah. Well, then that's just another way for them to identify and add some context to why they might be struggling with their ball striking. The same as when we analyze it, we can see club head position, club shaft position. Obviously, the easiest way to improve is to get individual or personalized online or in-person golf coaching. But exactly. a lot of players aren't in the ability or in the position to do so. So having reference points for themselves of club head, hands, and even this here, which I've never really thought of before in regards to this position and how that translates into impact. I think that's a great checkpoint for players. As well. Oh, for sure. And it, it, obviously, you know, we talked about it before, but how fast the downswing's happening, mm. you know, especially when you start getting closer to the ball, things are happening very fast. So if you can get in a spot where you can just get in a good spot and then let it flow through instead of making a reaction, the closer you get to the ball, the harder the reaction has to be and the less uh, often is probably going to happen. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. So when I set up here, um, let's say you're working with a player and they are in this position, there's this big 45 kind of pointing out over in this orientation. How would you then work through that with them to achieve a better outcome? So the first step would be just get them to adjust to the position. So, okay, what's your normal pre-impact? Mm -hmm. And then, okay, say it's this way. Okay, what's it like to move to that position? Okay, perfect. Now, can you go from the top and find that same position. Mm -hmm. And then the next step, can you go from the top, find that position once and then go up and then chip it. And then obviously finally go to the top and see if you can do it. And then we check it to make sure they're doing what they feel like they're doing. Yeah, yeah, perfect. So you're just layering the feel with the drill and then the actual intent of striking a golf ball. And as coaches, we know that's one of the easiest ways to internalize these new movement patterns into your subconscious is starting off slow and cognizant of the movement pattern. The more you do that, and then it builds on with intent, i.e. hitting the golf ball. Yeah. Well, then that starts to create that pathway that is going to then solidify so players can do it without thinking. Uh -huh. 100%. So let's say I am that player and I'm getting myself into that position. You want me to get to the top and get a, an understanding of what it's like to get this club back into this position. But straight away, I can, uh, I know that a lot of players are just going to do this by going like this, right? Yeah. Now, 
what is a way that they can ensure that they're still using the body in a harmonious manner, which would be effective. The, from the top of the swing, let's say their normal movement pattern would just be this way here. And then all of a sudden they just go, well, that's right. What right. would you say so, to that play there? Yeah, trying to find the blend. So when you get here, I would say, okay, I'm not going to really use my upper body, yeah. okay, but I still want to find that position. So from here, I'm using my lower body, and you can see how the, nothing's really spinning there. Yeah. I'm letting the upper body sort of get pulled by the lower body and then find that spot that I want to be in. And that you might feel everyone's going to be different on what they feel, but it's, it's probably going to give them a pretty good sense. Mm. Especially, you might even need to feel if you're a guy that was coming this way and the elbow was pointed this way you, sometimes i say okay feel like you're pointing it almost at the exactly you know right, like the total opposite like maybe back to where our card is positioned back there so it'd be instead of this way okay this person might need to feel like okay it's going to be there and then they're using the lower body a little bit might put them in a really nice spot coming into impact yeah i would say that this here is the effect to the cause of how that movement pattern has occurred, right? Yeah. So this is more so a reference that you can use for how the rest of the, the pieces, yeah. the upper and the lower body are moving. So let's say I'm at the top and then I do my normal movement pattern. I go, oh boy, I'm way out. I'm going to swing to the top again. I'm going to feel like it is yeah, a just like, shift and a and rotation. And that's going to be able to away. get into a really good position there pre-impact. Yeah. And that, that right Right when I get there, that's very similar to where I would be uh, if I was hitting a normal shot. And for me, when I do that, I'm feeling like there's very little sort of, oh yeah, my elbow crease is facing back towards the camera here, but yeah. now I look like T-Rex. Yeah. So I'm swinging to the top. I'm feeling like it is still a powerful athletic movement. The arms are naturally unloading underneath me because the sequence is led by the lower body, upper body's trailing behind. You can see the hands get back in front and then come through there. Any closing thoughts on this before we hit one down there? Yeah, I, I would just say, like you were saying there, we're, we're not going to change arm position to do it. We want to use the body to help guide that arm into the right spot. Okay, great. So I will map out a little one here. I'm going to get to the top. I'm going to feel that the body is guiding that down into position. Little checkpoint there. We can see the inside of that elbow crease is facing back towards the camera. Very happy with that. Let's see how it comes out. All right, my man. Yeah, flushed. That might be the best of today. Yeah, that's great. <laughs>